What is going on, Clippers fans? Welcome to season two, episode 35 of Clips and Dip, the last show of 2023. We're doing this on New Year's Eve. Last show <laughs> ever. Uh, thank you to everyone who's listened this year. It's been a really fun year. Um, you can find us on Spotify. If you're watching us, you can find us on YouTube at Clippers Podcast. I am Chuck Mockler, joined by Adam Oslin and Will Updike. We're talking the positive Kawhi injury update we got after people were really freaking out uh the clippers play the heat on new year's day when some of our listeners will be buying a car and then we're also going to be discussing the clippers 2024 what we're looking forward to that but before we get into the clippers stuff adam how is your end of of 2023 going how are you i don't know i tried to take a nap earlier i woke up i look like shit my panthers lost to the jaguars like it's 1996 all over again I don't, I don't feel great, so I'm glad this year's <laughs> over. <laughs> I think that's a fair sentiment. Did you see the video of the Panthers owner throwing a drink on the fan? Oh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah, he throws a drink like out of the owner suite, like at the crowd at some guy. Did he try to Jason Kidd explain it away like it was <laughs> I don't, an accident? Or? I don't think there was this, that much strategy behind it. <laughs> was I think it, was it an alcoholic just drink? For the Coors. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, was it, a, it was an alcoholic drink, I believe. That's a classy move. It's a classy move. A cocktail to the face. Yeah. Classy organization over there. Will, how are you doing? You're in Montana for this New Year's Eve. I'm sure Laurel, Montana is ablaze with activity. Electric. Electric. Um, yeah, I'm doing good. My Weirdly, my first cold smoke of the trip, uh, hmm. which if you're listening, is a, just it's a beer from Montana. It's, it's somewhat of a delicacy over here. Yeah, it's a Scotch ale. Real heavy. Uh, real heavy. So That's why I'm only having one. <laughs> it's smart. I think I had two of them on a live stream with Adam when I was in Missoula, and you could definitely tell. Um, yeah, the comments were outrageous. <laughs> let's talk this Kawhi injury update. Um, people are excited now. Think people were not excited uh, a couple days ago when we found out that the injury actually happened. Can we address that? Because that was one of the more fun things that we didn't get to talk about, how apparently there was yeah. some discrepancy in the reporting of of whether or not Kawhi was practicing. Um, oh, yeah. That was weird. Um, Ty said he like didn't know if he was going to be ready to practice a couple days ago. Yeah, or something like that. And now he is it was just it, it was just kind of more of the same where we get some intentional vagueness uh, from from the organization. And then you're kind of left to, you know, the, the great beat writers who who cover this team are kind of left to, to read between the lines as far as what that means. Right. Um, and it, yeah, so I feel like it was kind of a roundabout way that we even found out that Kawhi Leonard <laughs> hadn't even been practicing that had he hadn't even been cleared for five on five contact. Um, so that I like. I, to have this turnaround now just feels it, it feels really good, but it is a complete 180 from where we were a, a mere few days ago. That yeah, nature of the beast with this Clippers team. I was fine for where I was a few days ago. <laughs> I predicted he was going to play in the Miami Heat game, and it could still happen. How He's questionable. Voice? He practiced uh, in full per Ty Lu. He said, "We'll see on the possibility of him playing for the Heat." We're recording this before the injury report comes out. He's probably going to be questionable. But, I, I mean, I hey, if he's ready to play, let's get him some run before this road trip. I'm just glad he was able to practice. Nah, hold him out either way. <laughs> <laughs> Handicap the team a little bit. They'll work through it. You want, you want some, some purpose. You want, like, a, almost a false spot flag the heat a couple type scenario. Spot the heat a couple buckets. Have Kawhi sit out. Let's see what these fellas can do. Will Does, wants more obstacles, more yeah. adversity. He wants them to earn that victory. Like, don't play Kawhi. That's too easy of a win then. Come on. So iron there was, sharpens iron, my friends. There iron was, sharpens <laughs> iron. <laughs> there was a great note. Uh, I think this was from Law Murray. The Clippers won't have back-to-back -back days off again until January 17th through the 20th. So this was a huge practice to get in. Um, well, luckily, the schedule is pretty easy from there on out. I, hey, hey. I don't know. It could well, they be. said they were trying to, yeah, March is a breeze. They said they were trying to. Uh, don't even look at April. Don't even, April, don't even look at April. Oh, don't look at May, man. <laughs> they said they were trying to implement some uh, new offense lately over the last week, and it's been difficult because guys have been out, but it sounded like today was a day where they could do some of that as they just nice. want to have more counters out there and kind of bring James Harden along a little bit further in this process. Nice. Which, More wrinkles. Hell yeah. 
I thought even in that game uh, against the Grizzlies, which was maybe a harder victory than it needed to be, his passing has come like we've we've praised it multiple times already on the show. But I feel like he's at this position now where everyone is getting the comfortability where he's like he's like like it's like in the NFL where he's like throwing receivers open. Yeah, like he's like he's yeah. got like this half step where now guys are, are more encouraged to move off the ball because they know they're going to get found. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it, but I felt in that game uh, with, with those, what was it like 16 assists or whatever yeah. uh, that, that he was kind of throwing guys open in a way um, that, that I thought was really encouraging for some of that off ball movement, especially when you don't have the gravity of not having Kawhi out there, him just being like that little half step ahead, I think makes this offense already look really, really pretty scary. Uh, and if this isn't the final form yet, oh, buddy, look out for those Powell Rangers. Oh, That's all I'm buddy. saying. Um, no, 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 definitely not the final form. You got to combine the Dragon Zord with the Megazord, and then you bring in Titanus, who's like the Brontosaurus, and then it's like the super the thing. And when does the when does the White Tiger come in? White Ranger Tiger we're getting, Power. We're getting a that's, little off uh, track here, fellas. That's that's <laughs> later in season two. I think right around the time of the Ninja Zords. Yeah, but it's a whole saga where they don't know who's going to play the White Ranger, and then it's Jason David Frank. It's Less, the rest of R.I.P. R.I.P. Rest, R.I.P. rest of the league looking a lot like Rita Repulsa right now. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, so all they're I'm looking saying. like the fucking putty patrol. I mean, they're just getting <laughs> clown, just <laughs> Goldar and the whole bunch. Yeah. Also, Goldar. thanks for tuning in. If this is your first episode, yeah. Of hey, Live, welcome to Clips and Dip. Uh, you can check us out over on uh, YouTube. That's at Clippers Podcast. Anyway, sorry to Clips derail. Clips and Dip. Um, I thought this was the Powell Pod. I thought yeah. this was. <laughs> Um, another thing actually basketball related that I like what James Harden does is he rewards zoo. Well, big man runs the floor. Big man makes a defensive play. James Harden, <laughs> Adam's left. Uh, James Harden is there to make zoo, you know, feel a little more credit and whatnot in the offense when he makes that defensive play, which is great. And zoo's looked the best he's looked ever since James Harden has been on the team. I just think he's also just more encouraged to be more aggressive off ball to like really yeah. roll as hard as he can to, to the basket to not, not that he didn't have high effort before, but it, it's just different if you're not involved in the flow of the offense. Yes. I'm, I'm not saying that he wasn't trying before or anything, but it, it just clearly wasn't a focus of, of where they were going offensively. Um, and so, yeah, now it's a completely another element of his game that he's very much adept at. And that the Clippers can rely on in, in especially in situations where they're playing these smaller teams. Um, so, yeah. So let's look at this heat game. Do you think Kawhi plays after the reaggravation and whatnot? Will obviously wants him held out for as many games as possible so the Clippers can get to his level of play. Um, I, I'm, I'd like him to get this game in. If he can go before this road trip, I'd like him to get this game in. I think we talked about it when uh, I, I believe it was after the second game that he sat out and was still – Still day to day, we didn't have a whole lot of clarity on the situation. I said, I think like optimally we get to see him uh, one last time before the end of the year. That's clearly not going to happen. Um, but uh, coming in back against the Heat would be great. I just want him uh, to make me look good because I picked him as my player of the game <laughs> a couple like three days. My ago. Amir pick turned out. It might turn out. The Amir pick could be good too, but. I mean, if you call a guy who's been out for a week and a half and he comes back for your game and is the player of the game, sure. I would just feel so good to start off 2024. No, if he's healthy, if he feels good coming out of the practice, and that's what it comes down to. That's why they don't have a definitive answer yet regarding Kawhi Leonard because they want to see how he responds to actually playing or, or practicing fully. Yeah, That's the difference. So if he wakes up tomorrow and feels good, I think he'll end up playing. Um, there we go. So it's at least overall, it's great news considering that people were really starting to panic and hit the code red, wondering yeah. about Kawhi Leonard's status and the day to day stuff and just how long he's going to be out. People were saying, oh, oh, no, this means he's out till February. No, I think he will be back uh, within the next few games, at least. Yeah. Right. Yes, I I would agree with that for sure. Um, so the heat. Just lost to Utah. Jimmy Butler played 22 minutes. He's out after suffering a foot irritation per the heat injury report. Gross foot? Stinky, like foot. A stinky foot? 
Not a foot you want touching you. Yeah. Um, Anyway, he's out. Lowry is questionable after having missed the last game with a head contusion. What is going on over in Miami? You got head contusions. You got irritated feet. Um, They're hurt head to foot. (laughs) Adam, where are you at on this matchup? With no Jimmy Butler, I was looking at the stats from the Heat's last game, and Tyler Hero really lets it fly when Jimmy Butler's not there. What's your biggest concern maybe with this? Depleted for the most part, ish heat team. I think Bam out of bio. Uh, he's been a beast. He's having a really good year. He's been uh, making teams pay on the interior, and you know Tyler Hero definitely isn't afraid to put him up, and yeah. he's going to do that. And I did look up. You know they're tied for number one when it comes to three point efficiency. They're shooting thirty nine percent from the outside, just like the Indiana Pacers. 39.0 on the dot. They don't take a lot. They take just 33, yeah. even though they're that good from the outside, kind of like the Clippers. You know, they want the right type of three pointers, those quality three point shots. That's what Eric Spolster is looking for. But in a game where they could be down Kyle Lowry and they will be down Jimmy Butler, uh, they might put up a few more just to try to get their points up against the Clippers, just to find a way to see if they're hot. And so that perimeter defense for the Clippers is going to have to be big in this one, but it could be an inside out game with Bam Adebayo and Tyler here on the perimeter with Bam on the interior. And Duncan Robinson lets them fly too. So him off the bench, it's going to be interesting how maybe Miami puts both of them out there and kind of forces, you know, Ty Lue's hand with the scramble defense or something like that. But they have a chance to put two guys out there who could combine for like 15 threes um, or something like that. So Attempts, not making. God, I hope not. But yeah, they were just nine of thirty-one against the Utah Jazz, so they had yeah. an off three-point shooting game, which means maybe they'll be due against. Fantastic. The <laughs> hey, they benefited though against the Charlotte Hornets when they only yeah. hit six in that game. The next game against the Lakers, the Hornets hit six in the first quarter alone. So it doesn't just happen to the Clippers where they're on the wrong side of some weird outlier performance. It happens to everybody. Will, where are you at on this Heat matchup? Should the Clippers just still be able to take care of business without Kawhi? How? What's your worry? What's your concern? Not worry. You know what I mean. Code Red. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had Code Red, dude. Now that you said that, shit. I, I got Diet, dude, but it ain't Code Red. Um, my concern level is low, but maybe that is a trap. I I don't want to say that every game is a must win, but things are still really tight with the Clippers holding on to a top four spot. And that is really, really important. And, you know, I I've heard that there is some difficulty coming up in the schedule. I can't remember when, uh, but I, I think that it's really important to stack, to stack those sorts of wins, especially when you're at home. Uh, I think this is a really good matchup for the Clippers. I like our size, even being down, Kawhi I this to me seems like a very winnable game against a team that's going to be kind of while they have long-term continuity together certainly having like two major figures out of the rotation is going to be an adjustment and I don't they have some great role guys some really great role guys but I I have trouble seeing them offensively being able to create enough uh to overcome what the Clippers should be capable of their minutes were super weird uh, against the Jazz. They had two starters play less than 10 minutes. Um, Jaime played 35 off the bench. Duncan Robinson played 32 off the bench. Hayward Highsmith is also out for the Heat. He played 26 minutes off the bench um, against the Jazz. So they're out. Like, I mean, this is like a Kevin sets the stage for like a Kevin Love game or something like that. But having <laughs> having Highsmith out is big. It won't too. be Hawkes. It definitely <laughs> won't be Hawkes, according, according to Adam. We know it won't be Hawkes. Uh, but so that that just throws off their stuff more. And Spolstra, like, he's going to throw out what works. I Highsmith being out, I think, is a big issue, too. I, Jaime Hawkes and Kevin Love coming back to SoCal when they both played at UCLA could be problematic. Both sure. of them are going to get up for this game, I'm sure. I just, yeah, it's hard to get a read on this Miami Heat team right now. Uh, you look at their numbers overall, the advanced stuff and how they've been so far this season. Like, it's all kind of like better fine. defense than <laughs> offense, but yeah, they're not great at either. Yeah, uh, they've been recently. I think I was looking at the last ten games now, and offensively they're fourteenth, defensively they're eighth. 
But how many of those games do they have Jimmy Butler? Guys have been in and out of the lineup. It's just a really hard team to measure yourself against because you don't know exactly what you're going to get. I guess what you're going to get is a team that plays hard because of heat culture, baby. I mean, that well, that's like not these teams aren't that out. dissimilar, like record wise. I think, you know, you just expect the heat to, lead, to be a little bit more dominant in the East. I think they're, mm. we're like 19 and 12, and they're 19 and 13. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's probably pretty- better than where they were last year at this time. They had to sneak in through the play in and make it all the way to the NBA finals. You know, they, Jimmy Butler doesn't take the regular season as seriously. Playoff Butler is a real thing. So I don't know, but they are talented. Yeah. The yeah. Clippers, let's talk the Clippers now. James Harden has been, he's played 40 minutes uh, in two games last week. It's something that the Clippers very much needed. Um, 20, he's averaging 26 and nine without Kawhi. Um, I think he has another chance to really make a huge difference in this game against the Heat. If he can maybe keep the scoring going uh, throughout the whole game, um, I think that just gives them something actually they got to think about in addition to his, like Will said, passing people open. Yeah, that was a great point, too. I think that's really helped Avita Zubats. I can't remember if it was the game against Charlotte or right before that, where he threw that pass to Avita Zubats, who was underneath the basket, and the defender was just kind of a step behind him. And like yeah. you said, just threw him open. Uh, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And I know we've been joking how, well, it's really surprising that the best uh, assist <laughs> – <laughs> the assist right. leader last season is a really good passer, but I think it is still somewhat of a re- um, revelation for some. It's of also the new NBA for community. us. Like this is a, I, I, you know what I mean? It's not new necessarily yeah. in terms of James Harden, but for fans watching the the Clippers in the two one three era, this is the one type of point guard that I feel like we haven't really gotten the chance to try, and namely because that name hasn't really been out there, hasn't been attainable for the Clippers. But it, it it's been a joy to watch now that it's like. Now that you're working. Yeah. 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 That's true. I mean, the closest thought. Yeah. I mean, it's that's a really good point, actually. This is truly the best point guard, bar none, of the the 213 era. It just um, adds another element to this well, offense that, like, you know, has yeah. had its ebbs and flows. And I do think, you know, prior to the James Harden arrival, could get really gummed up, but also could be pretty damn efficient. Um, but to have like just such another look, um, I you know. The results are already pretty clear, but I just don't know how it could be anything but positive for the Clippers on the Mm. offensive end. There there was this other thought during this 2-1-3 era that they don't need that point guard because the ball is going to be in Kawhi's hands and Paul George's hands so often. I I, 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 I bought it. I bought into that idea. I I bought it. (laughs) Yeah. Sure. (laughs) Uh, I'm right there with you. It's just... Now, when you see it, a guy this level and the statement of, oh, he makes everyone around him better, which a lot of people wouldn't even attribute to James Harden at times because they thought he was just an ISO dribbler out there. But that statement or that that little generic uh, saying, it's not a throwaway. It's not. It's a real thing when you see it out there on the court and it affects both ends of the basketball because they can conserve more energy on defense. Kawhi's playing better defense this season because of that, guarding the best player late in fourth quarters because he has said post game he has less on his plate offensively. He's just more easily getting to his spots, and it helps when he has made that adjustment. Ever since the game up in Sacktown, where he started just moving much – he started moving quicker. He started making quicker decisions out there. He wasn't waiting for the double team. And so he's playing a little bit differently. He's playing some of his best basketball, but I don't think it's a coincidence that it's happening with James Harden. The fit was perfect. He's unlocking the best version of two, one, three. I think even though Paul George has been in a little bit of a slump lately and picked it up in the second half against Memphis. Oh yes, he did. God, I hope that carries over. (laughs) I just, you, you can see the ceiling being higher, higher and the floor being higher in the regular season. And those two things work together in tandem because if you're winning more games in the regular season and your floor is higher there because they're four and two now when they're missing either Paul George or Kawhi Leonard so far, that means you get a better seed, which raises your ceiling. Like I, It's not just about what he can do for them in the regular season. What happens here can affect your standing come the playoffs. And hopefully, even in a month like March, where it's going to be brutal with 17 games, 
James Harden and that effect of him having the basketball in his hands and making life easier on Kawhi and Paul George means they'll be fresher throughout that month. You know, so there's just so many different ways he affects this team. And by the way, he's shooting over 40% from the outside. He's putting up ridiculously efficient numbers. The burst just seems to be better and better. That play on Desmond Bain in the first half where he took him off the dribble, crossed him over, got the end yeah. one, missed the free throw. But just he, guys are having trouble staying in front of him now. Yeah, <laughs> the you know? shiftiness is there. The shiftiness is getting back. And the other thing, Harden and Russ sharing the floor together has gotten better. Uh, over the, the last four games without Kawhi, um, Harden and Russ are averaging 16 minutes per game together. They're plus 2.13 when they're, when they're sharing the court together, which is wow, two, one, three coincidence. Weird. It's not, it's not lighting the world on fire, obviously, but any two man lineup above them with a better plus minus in this sample size has averaged less than 10 minutes per game together so like for an actual two-man lineup that's been out there it's been better i'm not saying it's been great but Ty Lu has done a good job of picking when to play those two guys together and it's most likely because harden's been better but i'm happy to see it not be as horrific as it was well and the, uh the are the harden <laughs> are the harden and westbrook minutes uh Ty Lu's like pepe sylvia if you <laughs> <laughs> If, yeah. if you remember the insane they are. episode of It's Always Sunny, where they you're trying to find are, one dude. specific thing yeah. and trying to figure it out. There's I feel like that's, yeah, that's like Ty, that, that's Ty Lue's uh, yeah. <laughs> Westbrook Harden minutes. Yeah. I, I was looking this up earlier because Justin Rousseau asked Coach Lou today at practice. <laughs> I like how you say, one second, I love how you say Rousseau. I say Russo, but Russo is so much, so much more. Yeah, that's classy as hell. It's classy. Damn. It's classy it sounds French, but I yeah. think it's like Italian or Sicilian. His last name. It's Russo. No, Noah used to always give He's me a crap French for that. Canadian. It's Russo. <laughs> okay, the, I, this is the Grey Poupon version. Yeah. of Justin <laughs> Russo. Person in Quebecois, listen to this. <laughs> but he asked Coach Lou specifically about the three guard lineup with Norm, Russ, and James Harden. And so I pulled uh, the data since December 1st, what those three have done on the court. In 104 minutes, they played in 11 games. That lineup has been out there. The Clippers are shooting 53% from the field, 38% from three. They are a plus 26 in their 104 minutes. They have a plus 14 net rating as well. So good? when you typically think of three – guard lineups you think of pain hell Clippers. yeah <laughs> since december 1st they kind of found something there with those three and coach lou credited daniel tice being out there with them a lot and just having kind of a big who's a little bit more switchable and mason plumley news i was just gonna say we haven't even talked about that reminded me mason plumley's practicing he played we open with this? Game. <laughs> youtube comment first wish you would open with the plumb do you dog, not want bro. him back either will uh <laughs> hold him out <laughs> bring moses back man uh yeah no mason plumley's practicing it which is great can't imagine he's playing in this game against the heat but it's awesome to see do we think terrence Mann is going to bounce back in this game he's four for his last 24 shots shots not just threes, shots in general. He's me, missed 13 threes in a row. <laughs> He's missed his last 13 threes. We and love Terrence, man. That we're not laughing at Terrence, but like it's just this is no, it's almost comical day. how bad the slump has been. Yes, and we know he's so much better than game. this. Yes, the two that he made were worth it, or the four, or whatever it was. No, he got in transition some. Uh, the end of half layup he made off a great feed from Russell Westbrook, yeah. who was kind of just watching the clock melt down. And then at the very end, he gave it up to Terrence Mann, and he got it in. And then the transition bucket where it was, I think, a one-on-two in the third quarter was impressive from Terrence Mann. So some little things here and there, but the three ball still not falling. I was watching him pregame. I put the video up at follow out of May. He's in the far side corner. One of... Uh, the scouts or uh, one of their trainers, you know, trainers, he was putting a hand in his face yeah. and Terrence man knocked down, you know, two in a row. And I put that up on Twitter in the first quarter. He had a couple of those shots from that very spot. And Jaron Jackson Jr. Completely sagged off of him. Mm -hmm. This was the first time I really saw a team scheme for the fact that Terrence man is not hitting it. shots. We're going to see it against the heat. Bam. Bam's going to sag, sag off of him too. <laughs> yeah. But that same exact shot, more wide open, 
didn't have anybody with a hand in his face and he missed it. And you could just see it's all in his head right now. It's so plain and obvious. And it's just, it's just been brutal, man. Give him one game, please. Basketball gods where he just sees a couple go from the outside. I think that might be all it takes. New year, new man, right? January 1st, 2024. He just bought a new car. He's feeling hyped up. He's going to be, he's going to be shooting the damn lights out. So let's let's get in. You guys, to our- <laughs> I was gonna buy you guys cars, but the way you've been slandering, <laughs> we're the gonna New talk- Year's Day sale at okay, your local wait. dealership. So I, we're I'm gonna, not gonna do it now. Let's talk players of the game, and then we do. We did do a poll on Twitter about if people were gonna buy cars tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Will, who is your see this. who is your player of the game pick for Clippers versus Heat New Year's Day 2024? It's the same player that I gave last time, DJ Tucker. When we did this, <laughs> no, well, we're was, gonna was, change him. It was James Harden. Okay, I mean, playing great because he's the antithesis of the Heat. Oh yeah, that's a good call. Um, I might change it. A lot has happened. Heat culture, system V culture. Who did I pick? Oh yeah, I picked Amir because Kawhi won't play if he doesn't play. You shouldn't have picked him because I got Kawhi playing. <laughs> I, hope, I, I I'm hope so. sticking with it. I'm my, not backing off it now. My backup to Amir. I'm I'm putting it down. I'm saying New Year, New Man. Terrence Man will make one three pointer. Will he gets a backup? Two, Maybe even two. No, let's. Hey man, let's take what we can get, bro. One. He will make one three pointer. So Adam, we did a poll on Twitter. We asked. Um, we prefaced it. I don't know if you voted in this. I can't believe you didn't see it. Uh, we asked for the real listeners, vote. will you be buying a car on New Year's Day? Surprisingly, 10% said yes. No, which, it's up to 12.2% now. <laughs> I would, which I would, well, small sample size. 56% said no. 33% said, what? Excuse me? Um, so I don't know if it's going to happen. So... Are you saying you myth busted? I don't know my... if I myth busted you. I just, I just, I'm exploring this topic because I don't know if people buy cars on New Year's Day. I genuinely, it seems like it maybe makes sense. Everything must go out with the old models <laughs> in with the system. new. All right. Don't dealers start knowledge. bringing in like the 2024 models in like November though? Listen, I only buy three years out. So I don't even know what is really out you know, this year, the next year, the next year. So yeah, you guys aren't gearheads like me <laughs> buying a new car every new year, a new car every new year. Um, all right, we should, uh, let's get... buy it and stare at it and go, I got my car on new year's day. Check it out. <laughs> you see this car? A lot of new year's day, this is a new year's day special. Always easy to tell when your car's birthday is if you buy it on January 1st. Um, all right, coming up, we're talking Clippers 2024 predictions, uh, schedule stuff who the Clippers MVP of 2023 was, who the bounce back player might be in 2024. Um, The ads have been loud for some people. If that's been your case, go ahead and turn it down. We have ads coming up and then 2024 Clippers talk in three, two, one. Car ads. Welcome back into Clips and Dip. Uh, We're talking 2024 season predictions. We already talked a little bit about the biggest injury news, which we're looking forward to in 2024, which is possible returns for Kawhi Leonard, as well as Mason Plumlee. Charles. Where are we at here in our in our 2024 predictions? What what are you seeing on the horizon? So I was thinking about win streaks, right? Okay. Clippers had a fantastic one. Um, the Clippers have the seventh hardest strength of schedule based on the winning percentage of the teams we have left. Where are you at for that? Because I'm on Tankathon and it says ninth. Oh, really? Maybe it yeah. is ninth. Maybe I, I mean, it can um, shift over. It does One game yeah. happens yesterday. <laughs> I swear they were 16th a couple of days ago, and now it's night. It sh- yeah, okay. So it must have switched. Either way, one of the things I noticed in this is that they put the Grizzlies in the easiest opponents category, which I it, because it's based off winning percentage. Yeah, I that's not accurate to me. I would not put them in an easier category. Maybe. Oh, but, Will said they suck. So <laughs> very they true. Suck. They stink. <laughs> Let's say they get past the Heat. They make it three wins in a row. Then they go to Phoenix and New Orleans, and then at the Lakers. To me, this feels like their best shot at a solid win at a win streak in 2024. The schedule this upcoming brutal. schedule. This upcoming like four or three games. So four games. So you got the Heat and then Phoenix, New Orleans, Lakers. You're saying this is the best it's going to get? Looking at their schedule, 
I think it's their best shot at a winning streak is what I'm saying. I don't think they'll be playing their best, but I think it's winning streak wise. Not crazy. So you don't think 17 and 0 in March is a possibility. I'll tell you what, I have my quite literally my life savings on them going 17 and 0 in March. So I really hope it happens, but should invest in a new car tomorrow instead. (laughs) (laughs) Greatest Uh, investment. (laughs) <laughs> but like where I we hey we can screen share the schedule. I know a lot of reviews have recently said they missed that. We haven't done that the last couple episodes, but they just have a brutal road trip. We know about March, like it's not the easiest road uh for the Clippers in 2024. I, I see an opening and it happens near the end of March. Let's talk about it. I see Atlanta at home. I see two games in Portland, but there's okay. a day but in between. I see Philly at home. I see Indiana at home. Why don't you? Why aren't you screen sharing? You're throwing too much how. data at me. I can't visualize too it, man. What are we talking about here? <laughs> Is that good? You think Philly at home? You like the clips in Philly at home? A little hard and revenge. Okay, I like that idea. Because then we also then just go play the 76ers somehow. Early player of the game. That's what I'm I'm calling it already. Okay. I like it. All this right, March, Harden March get a vid? Does, does Harden get a vid? Ooh. Or because of the way things ended, do you not get a vid? Well, uh, that is what's interesting. They're very uh two games later. They're so, in Philly, yeah. Yeah. He's Wednesday like, the twenty seventh, after they take him on at home, the twenty fourth. I don't think he's getting a vid. He's getting a vid. <laughs> what if it just trolls him? What if it's a mean vid? Brotherly love, guys. Nobody's nicer yep. than the city of Philadelphia. So I like that. I like that I that schedule idea. I think you might be right there. That would be great to close out that month with some wins in a row. I wish I knew what you guys were talking about. Can't visualize it. So I gave a link in the breakdown to the schedule. Can't see. That's it. Not working for you? It's not on the screen. <laughs> visualize uh, a brand new Ford Tempo. <laughs> <laughs> So there was a play. there was a cool quote from Ty Lu. La Murray asked him about where he grew the most this year, uh, and he said being patient was a big thing, and learning how to keep joy amongst the team. Shockingly, he said the joy comes from winning. So that that was a nice surprise. But I thought the patient word uh, was a good call because it was a rough start to the year for the Clippers. We didn't know if we were going to get James Harden. There's a couple lineup changes. Like he's had to have been very patient, and he's been pulling the strings well lately. Yeah, man, he blew an opportunity to say like the funniest thing an impressor ever. What? <laughs> and insert whatever you want, man. <laughs> All right, Adam. How did Write you write your feel? own ending? <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh Adam, how'd you feel about Ty in 2023? Uh obviously the first three months of 2023 was a lot of Marcus Morris, and that was an mm. interesting situation going on still wasn't playing roco terrence man got in the starting lineup and then was demoted right after they were 10 and 4 but i've argued before that that record was a little bit inflated you look into the details some of those games they almost blew and the uh nick batum game where he beat the team with his namesake in the Knicks with that three pointer. That's the asses. joke. The joke was from <laughs> Will and all time. Yeah, he, he had he had to hit that shot. He was playing the Knicks, Nick yeah. Batum. I, I think overall it was positive because in the playoffs they still looked very competitive. I know they lost in five games, but they played hard without Paul George, without Kawhi Leonard. Those last three game five, they're down by twenty plus. They made a run at the end to come back. I still think he's the guy that can kind of put the formula together with this roster and make it all work and give them a chance to reach their highest ceiling and win in the playoffs at the highest level in a seven-game series. I feel very comfortable with Coach Lou pushing the buttons in a seven-game series. So He's proven it multiple times. So uh, whatever you want to say about the regular season, and it's been different so far this year, Yeah, uh, certainly. The mentality's been different for sure. Yeah, uh, I roll with Coach Lou. I, I have confidence. Will, a, ra- a resounding vote of quite literal vote of confidence from Adam. How are you feeling about Coach Lou? Were you you were never on the fire Coach Lou train, or were you? No, I I mean like I I I could never be fully on the fire Coach Lou train just because what's the alternative? 
Like I, I, I'm just, I don't see like, I, I, I don't see a better option out there. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think that there were, look, I think any team with, especially that makes a big trade and gives up a first rounder and already has so much money invested into this team, it goes on a losing streak. I think that there should probably be some pressure or at least some questions internally. Um, but no, Ty Lue is the best option out there. I think that he has really figured things out this season. And I think that he's been able to sort of get out of his own way. Um, I, I think that maybe he does still remain dedicated to some some questionable principles. But if it's working, <laughs> I, I can't really question it. That's fair. You want You want the questionable principles to stay in 2023 is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that's fair. Somebody um, go with questionable principles for the name tag <laughs> here. Um, all right. So who was the Clippers MVP in 2023? I think this is pretty obvious. Uh, Adam, who's your pick? Other than because it's Kawhi, right? It's just 100% Kawhi. Uh, yeah. Kawhi's <laughs> if we just take his numbers from 2023 because it was from January 7th on sure. into the first two games of the playoffs against the Phoenix Suns where he was at 53 47 90 splits and then last 11 games we've seen him this season he's been at 62 percent from the field 52 percent from the outside if you just take his numbers from 2023 in the uh 55 games or whatever it's been that he has played you're Very. looking at an all-time year, an all-time run, <laughs> one of the best ever. So, yeah, hard to argue with that. I'm not even going to joke about Marcus Morris or P.J. Tucker or say something like that because it's insulting. Hmm. That feels pointed. At Will? <laughs> <laughs> well, who would you pick other than Kawhi Leonard? Or is Kawhi Leonard not your pick? Uh, I mean, we've already kind of talked about him, but I do think that James Harden – it does bring something really, really interesting to this okay, team. And I, I you know, I, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that he has the ceiling of either one of Kawhi Leonard or Paul George. Certainly, their two way ability, um, and and their size gives them a, a huge advantage. I think, especially in the playoffs. But this new look, I, I think, really has the potential to just like just raise the offensive ceiling to higher than I guess I thought that it could be. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of thought that we had seen the apex really of like what this offense was and what it could do. Um, and, and seeing a new look to me, uh, it, it's just really shaking things up. I, I do think that, um, you know, obviously we have to have the, like the, the if healthy caveat, but like, if we continue, like, let's say they didn't improve at all from where they are right now. If this team didn't improve at all from where they are December 31st, 2023, and the playoffs started tomorrow, I would feel pretty damn good to well, be yeah, honest. Yeah, you get you. a skip March I'm, in those 17 games. Fucking A, yeah, <laughs> sign me up, dude. I, like, I, you know, so if we, even if we didn't see any further progress, I would feel pretty damn good about where the Clippers are, and I couldn't say that coming into the season. I couldn't say that, yeah. um, you know, through, through a lot of different points. So, I, you know, Kawhi is the obvious answer. Uh, but if you can't say Kawhi, I think that James Harden is really interesting and, and does bring such an interesting facet to this team that I didn't even think was necessarily something that they needed, but clearly they did, and clearly they are all the better for it. Yeah. It feels like in my opinion, <laughs> right now, he is saving this era. James Harden is He's saving the two one three close. era. Yeah. He's been that good, that important. And that perfect of a fit. I mean, if if it happens like it's constructed, it's total. I think it makes total sense to consider this as James Harden saving the two. It, it, it doesn't. There's mean, not a lot of years left in it. It's not a it, bad thing, but it doesn't mean they're going to win it all. You have to have luck. There's a lot of stuff outside of your control, uh, but you have to feel like the entire era is a little bit rejuvenated now. Like there's just this yeah. shot in the arm, what Will's talking about with their offense and they haven't peaked yet. And you already feel good about it. That's special. That's something when they were zero and five to start things off with James Harden, I'm sure nobody could foresee happening. Yeah. And the turnaround's pretty quick. 16 and five, their last 21 games. Is anybody better than that over the last 21 games? If they are, it's I'm, what maybe know. Philly. <laughs> Boston, maybe Boston. Boston, uh, they haven't lost at home still. Yeah. 
So maybe the Detroit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, possibly. Um, so who will the Clippers MVP of 2024 be? Do you think? Will who's your pick? Is it still Harden? Is this gonna repeat? Uh no, it'll be Kawhi. <laughs> right. That's all. Yeah. This one's easy. Let's talk MIP and it's Big Zoo, baby. Big Zoo 2023, 2024. Most improved. I think that's totally fair. I think Bring that's in. 100% accurate. Adam, Bring take in the Carl viewpoint. Tart. We got to talk about something. <laughs> Bring in Carl Tart right now. I Bring want him. Yeah. <laughs> Patch him in. Um, <laughs> no, Zoo has been better because James Harden has been so great. And I think Zoo deserves more credit. Um, he's also good at defense. He's got to be the most improved player, though. Like, Zoo is actually hitting the level that I feel like for the last three a lot seasons, of, yeah. we've been like, this guy has the potential. He's got the potential. Double, double guy. Double, double guy. Yeah. Double. Yeah. 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 We know who the least improved is, which is a shame. It's Terrence Mann. PJ Tucker? Well, sure. But it's Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann needs to be, Terrence Mann needs to be the comeback player of the year for the Clippers next year. Literally, like this cannot, I don't think, keep happening. Is Terrence Mann washed? No, he's that's not what I'm saying at all. But he's not looking good right now, which is shitty for him. Here's the good news I don't want this to happen. And I have pushed back against people on Twitter about this just a week and a half, two weeks ago, saying, Hey, you could just start a mere coffee now. I don't think that's going to help Terrence Mann pull himself out. Yeah, that, I don't of think that helps him. Yeah. Confidence wise, going to the bench may hurt him, or you never know. Maybe he feels more comfortable there. Or he rebuilds his confidence. There's less pressure. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it seems counterintuitive to uh, bring a guy off the bench after he earned the starting job and finally got it. And now he is playing or shooting at least. Uh, the worst he has in his career over this long of a stint. But if you have to, if it, he doesn't fix this in the next couple of weeks, and maybe not even that long because the games get tougher right now, I think. They got Phoenix twice coming up. They got the Lakers. They got the Pelicans. Amir Coffey, break glass in case of emergency, he's going to fill in admirably. Yeah. And just blend in easily with this team. He's done it. He's been doing it. I did not say bench Terrence. <laughs> I think I, I got, got the gist. I, I got the gist. From there. Yeah, that's what every that every comment on YouTube. I got the gist of what they're saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think a mere potential breakout of the 2024 for the Clips. I also because um, the easy answer would be why not just start Powell? Well. He doesn't provide the defense that Terrence Mann do does to yeah. take it or off the, the plate of Kawhi and Paul George. Yeah, anything. Amir checks a lot of those boxes of stuff that Terrence Mann does. Yeah, very true. That is true. And he's shooting. He's letting it fly. Um, I don't know what award. I didn't know what award to give this player, but I thought uh, Russ has been great. Russ has been good in his role off the bench. He's been hyping the team up. Was very excited when James Harden was having that fourth quarter. I think it was third quarter, but your MVP Russ is for 24. Not my MVP for 24. I would say he is the the 2024 achievement award. Whatever award you give to someone for being a great teammate and being there, but not an actual like MIP or anything like that. He's been great and is off the bench roll. Thanks for being a good guy award. <laughs> what the fuck? He's been playing good too. <laughs> that, that fourth quarter against Memphis, those three turnovers. But here's here's what I like about like, Coach Lou. Part of the whole shitty experience with Russ, partially because <laughs> he's but the good he's has been a, good. He's erratic. There's good and bad, but yeah. overall, coming off the bench, he's been good. It makes sense for the type of player he has been for a while, with the energy he brings to have a guy like that coming off the bench. To get this jolt of energy out there, I, I think it works and fits his game. I, I, it's been good to see, and he's taking he's taking a lot personally when he's out there. Like he knows he has to be that leader, but defensively he's been really good. He wanted everyone to know that recently, about a week and a half ago. Saying, "Yeah, I don't think he's first team all defense, but hey, if that motivates him, I'm all for it." <laughs> well, guys, I I haven't checked uh, the recent percentages but when he said that players were shooting just 40 percent against him on the year and so that was a pretty decent sample size that was like 25 percent of the maybe even 30 percent of the way through the season when he said it uh so it's not nothing motivation. it's I'll not nothing 
I'm not saying he's been bad defensively, but I just don't think he's first team all defense. No, you're right. I, <laughs> Zoo? I, he's Maybe. not getting enough minutes to be considered right. that guy either. Like, that's going to go to the starters. Uh, but Zoo yeah. will not be another center. He's already kind of got it locked up. Zoo? Oh, wait. One thing I want to talk about. Here's who I hope has a bounce back year in 2024, but I don't think it will happen. Uh, Clippers marketing. Uh, did anyone have any idea that it was Croatian night the other night? We have a starting Croatian on our team who's having the Playing best, the best basketball of his career. Best, nothing. The sick t-shirt design. I'm knocking things over. Where's the t-shirt the design is really good, though. They got that yeah, right. Where's I, feel, the I, li- I like the, the design quite a bit. Get the Croats out there. It'll be fun. Like, Hey, actually, why don't we give one of those t-shirts away to the best comment in the YouTube section for I this episode? Because I do not have one. I have one. Oh, what size? It's like an XL. I think that's yeah. what they gave away. I'm, dib- I'm dibsing the t-shirt. Let me see if I can find it. No, you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, let's do uh Well, Adam's going to go look through his house. I've actually never seen Adam's house. So uh, these brick walls, there could be anything behind that camera. It could. He could be outside right now. Yeah, flip that Flip that thing around. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> All right, what do we got? What do we, we're, get, we're saying best comment gets this t-shirt? That's such a sick T-shirt. That's what I'm saying. Promote this. More. The design is great. I think the design rules. If you want to, okay. If you want to see the design, check out uh, Clippers uh, YouTube.com slash at Clippers Podcast. We're going to be giving this T-shirt to the best comment, Adam. You see, there's these blocks here because he broke the paint. He oh, broke it. Yeah, good stuff. He ripped the net. Looks a little ripped too. Yeah, it's nasty. It's got a silhouette in the background. Like, it, don't it, don't get cool. your don't put your face all over it too much. We do have to give this to a fan. It's worth even more now. Oh, uh, give it a little kiss. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't give it a little kiss. Best comment um, in the YouTube uh, section for this episode at Clippers Podcast. Yeah, there we go. We love that. Uh, Adam, why does your hoodie have so many zippers? I don't know. He keeps his I, blades. I didn't. I bought it online. I didn't see what it was really working with here. It's supposed to be some type of fashion statement, but actually, they're fake ass. It's like a ripped Abercrombie, pre-ripped Abercrombie and Fitch hat. This There's is like nothing, the you can't even put it. anything. There's no pocket. It's like it's the pocket zipper. put on women's pants. <laughs> like, what? This is horrible. Yeah. All right, let's maybe uh, best comment also gets to buy Adam a shirt with pockets. 2024, Adam gets a shirt with pockets. I, let me tell you, I do not have deep pockets. They're right here, guys, and <laughs> yeah. they're surface levels. Uh, yeah. they um... Be. That about wraps everything up. Next episode, Tuesday or Thursday, depending uh, what you know everyone's feeling of uh, the Clippers play. We are going to have some double dips, though. But you know what I realized, guys? Some people who are new to the show might not know what a double dip is. Adam, what is the double dip? If you don't know what a double dip is, that makes you a dip. Okay, okay. No, it's, it doesn't. it's post We're game. To help these people it, out. <laughs> I I do a Clippers post game show after every game Deep. on the radio for am 570 and these guys come on and join me um pretty consistently chuck's been on a little too much lately but they've been winning anyways oh (laughs) okay all right heard i just will said it was in his contract that he only comes on after wins and the clippers have won two straight and he hasn't been on the post game show so when they come on we call it eclipse and double dip segment we play our intro song for Clips and Dip, the mm-hmm. Nipsey Hustle last time of that check song. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Apparently, Which we're isn't doing... on the YouTube due to due to copyright things. Sure, of course. Yeah, we apologize for that. Uh, we're apparently doing end of year reviews, so we got to get to those. We're going to let you find people go. Will, where can these people find this podcast, visually or uh, auditorily? Uh, so you can check out the audio from this podcast anywhere you get your podcast. Uh, if you feel so inclined, if you could leave us a review over on Apple Podcasts or now on Spotify, you can uh, rate and review over there. It really help us out. You, If you want to get the full essence, the, the jada vive of this show. Ooh, terroir. Uh, the terroir. You really should be watching it over on YouTube. That's uh, YouTube.com slash at Clippers Podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe, leave a comment, let us know you're there. Uh, it'd really help us out. And you can chop it us up with us anytime over on Twitter. That's uh, at Clippers Pod, I believe. Adam, you look like you have something you want to say. No, I just <laughs> wonder if you're going to come to me or not. For that. I was saying, where's the pot? Let's get a little positivity to close the year. You started off a little solemn to start the episode, but let's get some positive words to end this. This month. You're right. Um, LeBron's foot was on the line, guys. I don't no, know. we're not. God, we made, it this, we made it 49 minutes. All right, guys. Here's the real thing. Tomorrow, 
meet me at the Hyundai on 38th. <laughs> sure, up in Glendale. Uh, Kawhi Leonard could be back tomorrow. And if he's not back tomorrow, I expect him back on this road trip. I, you know, I have no inside information on that, but just given the fact he was practicing fully today, that has to be big for this team. He wants to get back out there. He played 27 straight, then missed the last four, and they went two and two. So James Harden effect, uh, there, that does not happen without him. Things are coming together for this ball club. So a lot, of, a lot of things to be positive about heading into 2024 with this Clippers team. There we go. He's feeling good. Will's feeling good. I'm feeling great. We're going to be back. <laughs> We're going to be back with y'all early or maybe late in the week, but we'll have some double dips for you. We hope your 2023 is great. We hope your 2024 is wonderful. Uh, and as always, let's go Clips.